Welcome back. Zimbabwean opposition MP Job Sikala has spent almost 80 days in prison after he was charged for instigating violence. Zimbabwean scholar and political analyst Professor Ibo Mandaza has written a letter to Job Sikala. For more on this letter on, via Zoom, we have Professor Ibo Mandaza. Professor, very good, good afternoon to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to SA Today. Good, good afternoon. Thank you for having me. Now, what prompted you to write this letter to MP Sikala? It was uh, on the occasion of him being denied for the fifth time bail application on the same day that another MP, Watka Jena, who was allegedly uh, involved in a five million US dollar scandal, was uh, afforded bail and even returned his passport to enable him to travel abroad. And the contrast was just too, uh, too, 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 uh, too sharp. And of course, as you just indicated, Job Sikala has been in for almost three months in, in, in maximum prison when he's not been convicted. He has been arrested 67 times before in the last 20 years and acquitted in all occasions. And now he's been treated as a criminal in maximum uh, prison way according to the letter he wrote to the to uh from prison he's been treated like a rat along with 15 others including another another mp godwin Satori. so we have two mps members of parliament in prison unconvicted but languishing in prison and i thought that letter was one to give some consolation uh but more important to profile his case, make it public, publicize it. And I'm grateful, therefore, that uh, SABC has found it uh, uh, necessary to have this interview. We want anything to be done that can highlight the plight of what is clearly one of political prison imprisonment uh, in this case. Well, investigations by the police, interestingly, did not link the murder to political violence. So uh, we're still not in the clear with regards to when his day in court will be and what he will be charged with. I think it's very clear that they want to punish him. But there's been an uh, extrajudicial process. Someone somewhere is giving instructions to the, mag to the magistrates to do what they're doing. Um, and it's clear part of the preemptive or the kind of campaign that is now underway ahead of the election in 2023, escalating violence, political violence, intimidation. And even uh, in, my, in my own case here at uh, Supplice Trust, our restaurant, which has uh, been a center for the last 15 years, for intellectual and, and political discourse was torched on the night of the 10th of August. And up to now, the police have not come up with any explanation. It's clearly, and on the same night, another colleague had his vehicle across, across the city burnt. Again, there's been no explanation of that. But it's clear to us it's part of the political campaign which is demonstrated very clearly in the by-election in Gokwe last week, where every effort is being made not only to frustrate opposition, but in my view, it might amount even to preempting the elections next year. But things are not good yeah. at all. Well, remember that in July, uh, MP Sikala said that he's got absolutely no regrets and he would rather die in prison for his beliefs. And uh, do you get a sense that uh, his case is treated with the urgency and the fairness that it deserves? No, it's not at all. I think that uh, he's, been, he's a brave man. As I said, he has, he has been in, 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 uh, arrested 67 times before, but in all cases acquitted. He's a brave man. He's become a symbol of the struggle in Zimbabwe for democracy. He's become a symbol of the extent to which the powers that be are repressive, almost similar, if not worse, than the Rhodesian days when some of us were 
likewise detained. Uh, but what I know, having been detained a few years ago myself, the prison conditions are much worse than they were under the Rhodesians. And I always wonder that those of us who were in the liberation struggle, who have been in the jails of Ian Smith, how do we allow that to meet that kind of treatment to our own citizens? It's always puzzled me. It's, it's, it smacks of, of cynicism, you know, and it's something to stop. And I think we, what we need here is really a, a broad a regional and global response mm -hmm. to this kind of behavior by the, by the Nangago state. And I suppose other issues that need global response is the issue of uh, the elections. And ahead of the elections, it looks like opposition has raised so many issues, including the impartiality of the Electoral Commission. What's your observations on this matter? Well, it's clearly, I mean, the ZEC has been under scrutiny for a long time. And by its own admission, uh, there's a large component of st state security agents therein. It is completely a discredited body. It cannot be expected to, to, to administer free, fair, and peaceful elections. And yet, the rot continues. Uh, by all accounts, uh, one might say that history is like to repeat itself uh, uh, next year. Uh, with all the indications that this election, in particular, is going to be a very violent one. Uh, perhaps uh, worse than the 2008 runoff. So I think we need to raise the red flag now on the process and to consider we are holding an international conference in November, uh, early, early December, to consider whether the conditions for free, fair and peaceful elections are in place six months before the elections. Uh, so far, from our analysis, we had, a, we, had a, we had a webinar on this two weeks ago. It is clear that the audit so far is very negative. We are in for a very heady election process in the months ahead. Now, turning to other issues, what's your reaction to the recent, uh, well, somewhat controversial statement made by the South African MEC of Health in Limpopo, Dr. Popira Matuba, uh, that has gone viral on social media and elsewhere, uh, where she raised the issue of Zimbabweans seeking medical health in South Africa? I think it's less about her statement, which is controversial enough and might even infringe on medical ethics. But I think the, the story, the real story, is less about that young lady than about the conditions in Zimbabwe, the conditions that has, that has led to at least three million Zimbabweans in South Africa. Uh, and right now, 75% of all skilled and professional Zimbabweans is outside the country. That is the focus. That should be our focus. The conditions in Zimbabwe, which have made it necessary for people to sneak across the border for medical treatment. For me, I think that is the story, not not uh, the young lady's statements. I, I I refuse to be distracted by that, and we need to focus on the conditions in Zimbabwe, the Zimbabwean crisis itself. All right, Professor Ibo Mandaza, lovely chatting to you, Prof. Thank you so much for joining us.